Hey everybody, Jason here again with GD&T Basics with the video question line. Today's topic is cylindricity and diametric measurements. So the question submitted was, I have a question regarding cylindricity. If we're measuring the ID of a bore, and let's assume the entire length of that bore is straight, and then I measure a 0 0.3750 inner diameter at the top of the bore and a 0 0.3748 inner diameter at the bottom of the bore, what would the cylindricity value be? Remember, these are being checked as diameters with an air gauge, or in other words, a really accurate tool to measure diameters. Let's take a look at this and see what the answer is. So here we see a simple bore. The top of that bore measures at 0 0.3750, and the bottom tapers down to 0 0.3748. So we have a difference between the two diameters of two tenths of a thousandth. And again, we have to make a couple of assumptions. Uh, the first assumption being diameters are perfectly circular. And the other assumption is that the surface of the bore is perfectly straight. Uh, so that could mean a couple different things. The bore could be straight along the linear elements of the bore, right? So we have perfectly straight linear elements. Or we could also have a perfectly straight derived median axis of this bore. In other words, it's perfectly straight. It doesn't bow like this, right? Um, in, in any case, we're assuming the bore is quote-unquote straight. Uh, and so we can assume that this is probably the worst case value up here, and this is the worst case value down here as far as the largest and smallest sizes. And now remember, cylindricity is the distance between two concentric cylinders, and the radial distance between those two cylinders is the cylindricity air. So if we were to fit two concentric cylinders, or coaxial cylinders, and we were to shrink the largest cylinder until we captured the largest diameter of our surface, and we were to grow the inner cylinder until we touched the smallest diameter of our cylinder, and again, those cylinders remain coaxial to each other, uh, that distance, the radial distance, between these two cylinders would be our cylindricity air. And so we can see the difference between these two values is two tenths of a thousandth, and that would be the value of this plus this. So we have to divide that by two in order to just get one of the radial distances. And so we'd actually have a cylindricity error in this example of one tenth of a thou. But let's take a look at another example. Let's say this bore was put in at an angle, uh, up at an angle like this, and you drop in your air gauge and you get a measurement up here and a measurement down here. And again, that air gauge is going to kind of center itself on the bore as it goes into the material. It's not going to level itself to the surface. It's going to orientate itself to the bore. So if this bore goes in at an angle, we still get the same measurements. You might think that we have more cylindricity air since the bottom diameter shifted to the left and the top diameter shifted to the right. However, Cylindricity does not care about the orientation of the hole. It simply cares about the form. And so the same measurement and the same value would be written down here as a 0 0.0001 or a tenth of a thousandth of cylindricity error. Now we are making some bold assumptions here. And the first one being that the diameters or the cross sections we're taking these sizes at are perfectly circular. If we take a measurement here and it's not perfectly circular and we got this measurement right here, uh, well, then this is a much smaller diameter here, and we're assuming it looks more like this. And so this smaller cross-section here, the smaller diameter measurement, uh, is going to impact the cylindricity air. So if we're assuming perfect cross-sections, uh, and it's actually smaller or larger and not perfectly circular, that's going to affect how much circularity air we have. Additionally, we're assuming that the surface of the bore is perfectly straight. If the surface of the bore does something like this, as it goes through, uh, we have obviously much more cylindricity air as well. This inner diameter has to shrink, and this outer diameter has to grow. And so that moves the radial distance between those two cylinders and increases the cylindricity air. We could take more size measurements, but that doesn't really help us understand how much cylindricity air we have. We could have three measurements. one two, and three. And all three of these measurements could be the same diametric measurement all the way up and down the bore. And if they're the same, we don't know where the location happened with respect to the other measurements. And so clearly there is some cylindricity error to the cylinder. But if all three of these measurements were the same measurement, we would be falsely assuming there's no cylindricity error. And so again, these are kind of bold assumptions to make, but nonetheless, if you take two diametric measurements and you want to get a rough estimate as to what your cylindricity would be, uh, you can make some assumptions and get close. 
So hopefully this answers your question and helps you out with some of your inspection processes. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles written by training experts.